Hello guys and welcome to the channel. I am Marv and this is going to be the Moon Pools podcast and in this podcast we're going to be highlighting the new moon in Scorpio that's going to be taking place on November 13th, 2023. If you are catching this by way of readings by Marvelous Madame Tarot, hello, hello and welcome. If you are catching this uh, by way of the Marvelous Enlightenment channel. Welcome. Thank you guys so much for lending me your ears. We're going to go ahead and get right into this. Everything that you need is below in the description box for you and your collectives. If you are new, this is what I do every single new and full moon. Um, even if that new and full moon happens to be an eclipse. So we do these twice a month. They are uh, published on both Marvelous Enlightenment as well as uh, readings by Marvelous Madame Tarot. It will be time stamped and broken down by the um, in the audio podcast portion of this. It is a audio video pod um, and it's going to be time stamped uh, via your rising sign. So if you do not know your rising sign, that's fine. Please watch for your sun. I typically um, don't uh, think that it is that resonant for moon signs, but you can definitely find out what your moon sign is going through collectively and find out whether that does resonate with you. It really just depends on which one of your big three you resonate with the most. But for more accuracy on what you're going to be dealing with, it probably will be more accurate via your rising sign. With that being said, um, I am going to be, this is going to be split up into two parts that are always put together. As soon as this audio version of the audio video podcast is over, we will go directly into our video um, portion of this pod. And what you will see is I will be pulling a card per rising sign or per zodiac sign um, because that is where the name came from. So without further ado... Again, everything you need is below in the description box for you and your collective. And please make sure that you watch for your big three if that's what you want to do. And let's go. We begin right now. In the heart of this mystifying season, the veil between worlds is thin. Governed by the Lord of the underworld himself, Scorpio possesses a penetrating passion so potent that it can, do it, it can delve beneath the surface of all things, its fixed waters run deep and its plutonian essence serves as a catalyst for death, life and rebirth. Or let me go, go back in order. Life, death and rebirth. Although the act of surrendering isn't always easy, this celestial season beckons us to comfort the hidden truths that dwell within us. Tis the season of the metamorphosis can you feel it, guys? Okay. The more concealed aspects of yourself are emerging and just in time for the beginning of a brand new cycle. For reference, be sure to check which astrological house belongs to the forbidden Scorpio in your chart. After all, tensions are rising with the sun. Mercury and Mars is changing up this area of your life. And me in the meantime, consider that this is an opportunity to sit with your emotions and explore the depths of your being. Meditate, spend time in nature, move your body, write in your journal. This month's new moon in Scorpio arrives on November 13th at exactly 427 a.m. Eastern Time. During this lunar phase, the sun and the moon unite, shrouding in the sky and shrouding the sky with darkness. However, never underestimate the, mo the moon's vis invisibility as it heralds a time of magic, fertility and new beginnings. With Scorpio's influence, the darkness of the lunar phase takes on an eerie, captivating quality. What are you hoping to transform in your personal life? What are you slowly but surely starting to realize about yourself? Sorry for that noise, guys. I needed to get something off of my desk. Let's keep moving. On top of the sun and moon joining forces via 20 degrees of this fixed water sign, Luna will conjunct red hot, red hot Mars and Scorpio. So there's going to be our conjunction. Mars is bold, provocative, and audacious in his pursuits and exceptionally powerful in this domicile Scorpio. Domicile meaning that it's at home. Okay. 
These are powerful activations, so be sure to harness this intense energy wisely. Look at it this way. With Mars conjunct the new moon, you not only have the bravery and the fortitude to take on any challenge, but you also have the drive and determination to see it through completion. But there is always a caution. The new moon and Mars will make a direct opposition to the rebellious Uranus, which is the planet of liberation, breakthroughs, and unexpected disruptions. Bad news first. Let's get that out the way. The combination of Mars and Uranus can, can be equally hostile as it is unexpectedly volatile. Oppositions are usually are typically polarizing considering the differences between the signs that are present, but the combination of forceful and willful Mars will def will defiant and um, rebellious Uranus, Uranus can be lethal. I'll go back over that. Oppositions are typically polarizing considering the difference between the differences between the signs that are present, but the combination of forceful and willful Mars will defiant and rebellious Uranus can be lethal. Okay. With the defiant rebel, it is lethal. Um, what I found guys and what I have noticed with individuals who go up against one another, but they always are attracted to one another. Just put it like this. I grew up in a Uranus, uh, uh, Mars, uh, household. That's what I grew up in. And it is always volatile. It's all, it was always something. So I understand. So this may be welcome for me, but I have, I don't, I don't live my life in those type of, um, in my home, my personal home as an adult is not ruled by either of those. Thank God I don't have those um, in my chart as, um, well, everybody has everything in their chart, but those dynamics are not in my day-to-day -day life is my point. So I know that when Mars and Plutonian, because uh, and when I say Plutonian, Pluto, um, Mars and Pluto co, I guess they co-rule Scorpio. Okay, so Mars is ancient and um, the modern is Pluto, but even whether it is Mars and Pluto and Uranus, they don't go together. They just are completely, totally different opposite signs. Uranus is air. Um, Mars is fire typically, but in this case, when, uh, and, and Pluto obviously is, um, uh, Mars is action and a little bit of power, but Pluto is power. So and if I said that in reverse, I just mean that Mars is action. The ruler of Aries, Pluto now is um, the ruler of Mars. I'm sorry, the ruler of Scorpio. And when they both are together, it can definitely make way for a lot of disruption and volatileness and just like it's, it's just horrible. And if you can imagine growing up in that. So, of course, the opposite of that would be peaceful. My um, surroundings and my home is tranquil, serene and peaceful. So I don't do well in this energy and I'm not I'm, I, and I don't back down to it either. I will go hard to make sure that my environment is peaceful. It completely um, is the opposite of my rising sign, which needs it to be not hostile work environment. So some people thrive in that. Moving on. On a brighter note, this can be an emotional liberation of sorts or a big timeline jump that allows you to break away from the karmic patterns in your life. In any event, this lunation is urging you to confront your fears and repressed emotions. A new cycle awaits, so step into your power. Now, before we get into the all signs, I just want you to know um, it is supposed to be a good thing. Any type of new moon brings new opportunities. However, um, the, you have to, and I tell my clients this all the time, you have to consider the energy of that particular moon. Um, and you have to consider the energy of the zodiac sign that's driving that. So you have to know what, what I would suggest before we break into the all signs is to tap into your energy One second, guys. 
tap into your energy and figure out what you like. What zodiac signs do you do well with? What zodiac signs do you not do well with? It doesn't matter um, what it is, what the situation is, at a very minimum. Go through all 12 zodiac signs and think about someone that you know that represents every single one of those 12 zodiac signs and write a list. Like, dislike, like, dislike. So therefore, when these new moons and full moons come in, you will be better to able nap you will be better equipped to navigate that energy because you know what you like and what you don't like. At a very minimum, you don't even have to be an astrologer to do that. Let's say you had a coworker from 10 years ago that was an Aquarius and they they you didn't like the way they thought. You didn't like the way they were whiny or whatever the stereotype is, you still didn't like it. It you know, every stereotype has an ounce of truth in it. The only difference is, is that we look at them as one way, but they are completely justified in the way they feel, just like with all of us. So with that being said, um, that is what I'm going to advise you to do just to, so you can uh, be, be able to better navigate each one of these um, moons because we all get a turn. And typically, um, the, the, you know, I, I've, I've taught you guys this before. When we have a new moon, it has six months of, of, of a, a you know, manifestation period. So you should be setting intentions, which we will go over in, my, um, in, in the video portion of this. I will talk about that more and teach you how to do that. We, we follow a book if you've been here before. But think about that because you need to understand the flavor of each one of these energies. And if you don't do well with them, we're sitting around like, damn, I hate this time of the year. Like the summer's not good for me or this and that. And, but, but really what you're experiencing is either an energy that you don't do good with, an energy that you don't like, but regardless of whether you like it or not, it's here to teach you something. I don't do good in these energies, but I also have strong boundaries up. I'm not worried about anybody coming in and being disruptive. The only thing I can do is control what I can control. And that is only me. Um, you know, you shouldn't be afraid, but you should also be prepared. Some people do not do good with preparation. They would rather never find out and just let the shit happen when it happens. So, you know, I find that those are more fixed in energy, but those of us who are cardinal, um, feel a little bit different. Let me know so I can know ahead of time so I can know what to do. Everyone doesn't know how to prepare for a disaster. Some people panic. So it's the same way with these transits. All right. So keep that in mind. And I want you to know that no matter what, as I just mentioned, not too long ago, a new cycle is awaiting. So step into your power. So now we are going to go ahead and get into the all signs I am going to be breaking these down of per zodiac sign based upon your rising and sun. And then I will be giving you a new moon affirmation as well. Um, and we, in, in the new moons, we have affirmations. And then in our full moons, we, we release. We have, um, in our full moons, we typically have, um, we have a reflection. I call it the full moon reflection, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get into this. We are going to start off with Aries and Aries rising. While transiting the transformative sign of Scorpio, your celestial ruler, Mars, is a force to be reckoned with, okay? But when considering its conjunction to the new moon, because you are ruled by um, um, Mars, so that's going to um, immediately cause a conjunction for you, um, which is a favorable aspect. OK, not to mention its opposition. So you're going to get both to the freedom loving Uranus. All right. You're bound to experience a series of highs and lows in regards to your passion and individual pursuits. And, and, and it makes sense, Aries, because on one hand, you're going to be experiencing con a conjunction. And then on the other hand, you're going to be experiencing an opposition. OK, so on one hand, it feels good, but then something else. So that is the reason why it's being experienced as or described as highs and lows. In addition to unveiling the shadow side of your intimate unions, this lunation is presenting you with an opportunity to detach from energies and entanglements that are not serving you. Okay, not serving you. 
So Aries, the same goes for financial trauma and money-based fears. Okay. So your new moon affirmation for Aries and Aries rising is I will live fearlessly and I'm letting go all that does not serve me. All right. We move on to Taurus and Taurus rising. It's getting harder to deny the shadow side of your connections and commitments. Under this lunation, you're being challenged to question the foundation of your approach and relationships, whether in terms of what you consider stable and or valuable. The new moon will conjunct Mars and Scorpio, charging up your seventh house of agreements, compromise, and significant others. This in turn brings forth a period of renewal while in opposition with Uranus. You could simultaneously break free from a toxic connection or a relationship pattern. Taurus, your new moon affirmation is as follows. I am my own individual. I never pretend to be someone else when I am with my partner. We move on to Gemini and Gemini rising. Luna will be renewing itself in one of the busiest sectors of your chart, Gemini. Sitting in conjunction with Mars, this lunation is presenting you with an opportunity to make positive changes in your personal life. However, while close proximity to the red planet, that's Mars, you could simultaneously feel triggered by the dark side of your current responsibilities and obligations, health habits, and health habits are no exception. When reflecting on the foundation of your daily routines, do you feel productive and inspired? Luna will be making an opposition to freedom-loving Uranus, which in turn could help you release limited beliefs and energies that hinder your day-to-day -day life. Gemini, your new moon affirmation is as follows. To best care for others, I must care for myself. I release the pressure I put on myself. We move on to cancer and cancer rising. If something's holding you back from fully expressing yourself, it's becoming more apparent than ever. For instance, Luna will renew itself via your sister sign in Scorpio, which will be charging up your fifth house of passion projects, romantic rendezvous, and self-expression. Sitting alongside Mars and Scorpio, this lunation is urging you to deep dive in order to rediscover everything from your heart's desires to what's genuinely inspiring to you. Keep in mind that the moon will make an opposition to Mars, shaking things up when it comes down to your social connections and, cont and contributions in the world, okay? Are you committed to future goals? Are you committed to future goals? Or are you, are you committed to your future goals and vision or is your power being taken away from you? Okay. Cancer, your new moon affirmation is as follows. I allow my creativity to flow through me. My life is a limitless source of passion. All right. All right. We move on to Leo and Leo rising. This supercharged lunation is igniting your fourth house of home, family, and ancestral patterns. Luna will also be in close proximity to Mars and Scorpio, impacting your emotional foundation and domestic framework. Do you feel safe where you are? Are you comfortable confronting the emotions that are resurfacing? During this lunar phase, you may uncover fears and taboo subjects that is related to your sense of security and perception of home. If you experience unexpected disruptions, it can stem from Luna's opposition to Uranus but it is helping you break free of toxic patterns and family dynamics that don't serve you. It's funny, my brother just gave me a call about something today and this is very much so aligning um, to fourth house and home and family for him. Yeah, yes, 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 I, I know it um, as a Leo son. Leo, your new moon affirmation is as follows. My family and I have unlimited potential for love and healing. I release what no longer makes me safe. We move on to Virgo and Virgo rising. Your intuition is heightened and your powers of manifestation are remarkably fertile under this, new moon, uh, this November's new moon. On top of igniting your third house of communication and immediate surroundings, Luna will join forces with Mars. Pay attention to your downloads as you are more prone to seeing the dark side of your exchanges as well as the shadow side of your communication style. This is happening for a reason. 
But this lunation is urging you to face the shadowy aspects of your inner circle and thought processes while, oppo while, while opposing change maker Uranus, you're simultaneously breaking free from a narrow way of thinking. There's a reason why you perceive the world around you the way that you do, Virgo. So your new moon affirmation is as follows. I choose to believe in myself even in the most challenging times. I wake up every day with a peaceful mindset and a grateful heart. We move on to Libra and Libra rising. What is revealed to you can no longer be denied, Libra. The new moon in Scorpio is energizing your stability seeking second house of comfort, money, and values, all while occupying the same space as Mars, the planet of aggression and passion. What are you hoping to manifest in this area of your life? Clarify your intentions as this is the key to your manifestation process. This lunation is encouraging you to confront the dark side of your spending habits and creature comforts while others of you confront a lack mentality. Where are you investing your time and energy and why? Upheaval and unexpected surprises are likely due to Luna's opposition to Uranus, but it's all happening in divine timing. Libra, your new moon affirmation is as follows. My actions create prosperity and my life is overflowing with abundance. We move on to the star of the show, Scorpio and Scorpio rising. Make the most of your new moon, Scorpio. It does not get more pivotal than this. A cosmic alignment is occurring in your sign as the sun and moon join forces for a transformative new moon and a fresh start in your personal life. Sitting alongside your traditional ruler, which is Mars, this lunation wants you to thoroughly examine and investigate the hidden aspects of your personality, as well as your attitude to relationship with others. Your unconscious motivations and fear of rejection may surface, but it's time to liberate yourself from these obstacles that have been impeding your progress by directly addressing the underlying causes of your emotional reactions. Before I get into your new moon affirmation, Scorpio, I want to spend some time here for a second. Every Scorpio that I know deals with this. There is a deep fear of rejection and a everything that you flat out refuse to do is a direct result of your fear and no you and, and you know you may not like that word but that's what it is of your fear of not wanting something to happen you don't open up because you don't want to be judged you don't do this because you don't want to do that everything that you don't want to do because you're preventing something else is a fear that you have and now is the time for those fears to be you need to work through them because again this lunation wants you to thoroughly examine and investigate the hidden aspects of your personality, as well as your attitude to relationship with others. This is your new moon. So from now for the six months uh, that follows this, you should be manifesting better relationships because it all starts with you. A lot of the time it is you being in your own way. And I understand this. I have um, this in my second house and my relationship to money and how I feel about credit cards and all of this crap is a big part of some of the, the struggles that I have. Um, and let's face it, as it pertains to me, with Scorpio being there, um, which is not the best placement, but I have to learn how to work through it. It's not in detriment, but I don't like it there. Um, be but but the beautiful part about it is, is that it is extremely transformative. So I can always tap into the beautiful energy of endings, meaning new beginnings and something else. And that's what normally happens. Um, it does create some issues with me personally because I have this earth in my chart and I'm very slow and steady. And with having um, Capricorn, it's very hard to deal with the ebbs and flows that may come through through this house. But again, my attitude about it is what actually um, hinders a certain forward movement. And I have to constantly examine that, 
Because let's face it, what you don't respect, you're not going to feed into. And as having that Scorpio placement there, if I don't respect something, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, um, give into it. I'm not going to care about it. And that is what I find with you guys. A lot of the times it's like, I'm not doing this because I know that that's what this person's want. This person wants this, or I'm not giving in to this because you can't control something or you're not going to control me. But remember, emotions are natural. When you hold back your emotions because you don't want someone else to know how you feel, then what's the purpose of loving? What's the purpose of loving? If you were holding back those emotions and not sharing those things with somebody because you've been abused or all of that, then of course you know then it's time for you to let go of that person. But what's the purpose of being in love with someone and holding back your emotions for fear of rejection? Um, what is the, um, the, the quote that I got? I told you guys um, in Jada's book, although her book is becoming a flop, but... That that's neither here nor there. One of the things that someone that was counseling her told her that I took that I really resonated with is that a heart has to break in order to grow. So allow yourself to stand up and face those things that you are um, that you're afraid of. Allow the rejection to take place, because at that point you you won't know if you keep trying to shield yourself from that fall. Moving on to Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. One second, guys. Interesting. You may be craving solitude more than usual these days because the sun moving through your 12th house of privacy and healing is there. Either way, the moon will be renewing itself in Scorpio via this area of your chart, which in turn activates this area of your life profoundly. Have you been holding on to a secret? Is there a part of yourself or your life that you're ready to release? Conjunct Mars, everything from your subconscious patterns to your private life is brought up into sharp focus. Regardless of your level of determination to confront these aspects of your life, Sagittarius, uh, this lunation will stand to aid you in, in the process of purging, okay? While opposition with Uranus, unexpect, expect the unexpected with your day-to-day -day routines. Something's got to give. Sagittarius, your, your new moon affirmation is as follows. I resist the urge to take control. I choose to surrender my doubts and fears to the universe. We move on to Capricorn and Capricorn rising. There's a revelatory new moon underway highlighting the dark side of your social contributions, as well as the root of your goals and aspirations. Triggering energies could surface as the moon will conjunct Mars and Scorpio in this area of your chart which has everything to do with associations, community affairs, and your sense of belonging in the world. Whether it be a competitive work environment or a group of power players, it is important for you to reflect on the root of your behavior and approach in the social scene. Keep in mind the new moon and Mars will directly oppose rebellious Uranus in your fifth house of passion projects and self-expression. An outdated persona you, must, you, mu you once inspired to be is likely shifting, but know that this is for your highest good. Capricorn, I am working with a Capricorn sun right now. And um, as a Capricorn moon, I understand where she comes from, but in her work environment, she is always, uh, she has a very challenging aspect of her personality where she's always trying to challenge something. Not only does she want to tell you what to do, she has a tendency of talking down on people um, and challenging everything. The moment someone doesn't give her what she wants, that part of her personality is coming back to bite her because she has been um, uh, called all the way up uh, to the uh, presidents of her company because of her behavior. Now, unfortunately, 
um, that behavior is not necessarily, um, I don't believe that that's her Capricorn that's doing it. The, uh, the Capricorn is only a part of it. I suspect that it is her Virgo. And I feel like there's also some fire somewhere because she's very quick to respond, but she's reactive. Um, so that's only a reflection of what's going on inside of her. Um, she also is very competitive. Um, I know Capricorns and, you know, we get a bad rap collectively of stepping on individuals when we're climbing up the corporate ladder and not really caring about someone else. I, I think that that is partially true. It really depends on the other, um, you know, placements in your chart. I don't necessarily care because I'm not in competition. I'm going to do things the way I'm going to do things, but that could just be my blend. I am sure in individuals like her, because I do sense some fire. I have not pulled um, an entire chart on her because I've only been life coaching her. Um, I haven't done any astrological things on her, but it's interesting that this is going on. And no matter what I try to tell her to watch, she doesn't listen. So there, I, there's this rebelliousness. So it could be Aquarius, but I'm thinking it's Aries that is doing that. Um, because I seem to be an Aries moon um, attractor, no matter whether it's personal or professional, which is interesting. So I know for a fact, I know that her significant other is an Aries. So they, when you are, when, what you attract is typically what you have somewhere in, in your chart. Um, that's the glue that brings you guys together because you would not be able to deal with that if you didn't see that in yourself. Um, so just be mindful that this is going on right now. Um, and it's, it's not great. Um, but I'm going to send you guys, um, you know, um, heal and light if this is what you're going through, but moving on your new moon affirmation is as follows. I am confident in my abilities, gifts, and talents to change the present state of the world. I am unpo unapologetically myself. Good luck Capricorns. We move on to Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Whether it pertains to your professional trajectory or perception of yourself as an authority figure, the new moon in Scorpio is bringing awareness to your primary success motivator. Sitting alongside Mars in opposition in your modern ruler, which is Uranus, um, this lunation is here to unveil the concealed aspects of your, pub your public persona. If things feel chaotic on the home front or perhaps with regards to your sense of authority, it is important to tune into these emotions and confront the dark side of your projections of self-mastery. Whether it be a parent or an image that you're trying to uphold, this will help you to liberate yourself from an unconscious expectation that has been imposed upon you. Aquarius, your new, your new moon affirmation is as follows. I am well aware of my purpose because that's what motivates me every single day. And last but not least, we move on to Pisces and Pisces rising. November's uh, new moon in Scorpio adds a heightened emphasis on the inspiration behind your faith, spirituality, and the view of the world around you. Ch conjunct go-getter Mars, this lunation encourages you to dive deep and explore the underlying truths that has inspired or on the dark side plagued you. Whether you look towards the future, what's the first, when you look toward the future, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Everything from your personal philosophy to your general outlook in life can be, cha can be challenged in an unexpected way, thanks to the moon's opposition to rebellious Uranus. A new cycle awaits you, Pisces, and it has everything to do with how you can transcend, transcend your limited belief system. This is very important for you guys. Pisces, your new moon affirmation is as follows. My future is not defined by my past. I align myself with self-sufficiency and resilience. And that concludes the audio um, podcast. I do want to call out some other key things for those of you who um, are in um, are into astrology. I'm just going to go into this. We're going to talk about Mercury square and Saturn and uh, Mars opposing Uranus. We've already covered 
um, in this particular new moon because this new moon obviously um, opposes Uranus as well. Um, and you could be feeling it right now and it can go between um, the 7th through the 15th. So now that we've talked about uh, Mars opposing Uranus, there is something that I do want to um, point out. And it's going to be um, time stamped that separately, not per sign. I'm just going to tell tell you what everything is. I may not um, time stamp this. I just want you to listen. So Mercury is squaring Saturn. All right. That's what's happening right now. Mercury is in Sagittarius um, and it moved into Sagittarius on November the 9th and it's going to square Saturn um, on the 10th, okay, which is Saturday. Sorry, it's Friday, the 9th, the 9th and the 10th, I'm sorry. It squares Saturn on the 10th and so the Mercury square Saturn is going to happen the same weekend um, and the new moon is going to be on Monday. So it's going to be um, a bit of a crazy weekend. And then, so all of this is, we're feeling all of it anyway. All right. So um, Aries and Aries rise and Mercury is in the ninth and it's going to square Saturn in the 12th. Taurus and Taurus rise and Mercury is in your eighth house and it's going to square Saturn in the 11th. Gemini and Gemini rise and Mercury is in your seventh house and it's going to square Saturn in the 10th. Cancer and Cancer rise and Mercury is in the sixth house and it's going to square Saturn in the ninth. Leo and Leo rise and Mercury is in your fifth house and it's going to uh, square Saturn in the eighth. Virgo and Virgo rise and Mercury is in your fourth house, squaring Saturn in the seventh. Libra and Libra rise and Mercury is in our third house and it's going to square Saturn in the sixth. Scorpio and Scorpio rise, and in addition to you experiencing the new moon in Scorpio, Mercury is in your second house, and it's going to square Saturn in the fifth. Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, um, Mercury is in your first house, of course, because this Mercury just moved into your sign, and it's going to square Saturn in the fourth. Capricorn, sun, and rising, Mercury is in your twelfth house, and it's going to square Saturn in the third. Aquarius and Aquarius Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Mercury is currently in your 11th house, which will square Saturn in your second. And last but not least, Pisces and Pisces rising. Mercury is in your 10th house, squaring Saturn in the first. You can go and look that up. Um, I would not have any additional commentary on that. I just wanted to let you know what else was going on this weekend. Um, and the weekend leading up to the new moon in Scorpio is what I should say. So thank you so much for allowing me to have your ears for this time. Um, remember, in addition to new moons, which are typically positive, um, this whole thing about Mars op um, opposing Uranus is going to be a big thing for you from about the 7th. You could have already been feeling it all the way up to the 15th. And so... That's what I have for you. Thank you so much. And the next clip will be us going into our moon pools. Um, and that will be the video version of the podcast. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next month, guys, when we do it again. Hello, guys, and welcome to the video portion of the audio video podcast highlighting the new moon in Scorpio. Everything you need, of course, is below in the description box for you and your collective because this is not an eclipse. We will be going back to the power wish. Um, the link to this book is below um, in the in the actual description. But I'm going to show you um, for those of you who want to buy the book to follow. This is what it looks like. And I do have um, the links to it for Amazon. I took the other links off because it was just absolutely ridiculous, guys, um, for the price of that. So we're going to go ahead and get started. There is a way to anchor uh, for both new moons and full moons. I will not get into the anchoring statements. Again, I keep promising you guys a standalone video for that. Um, and I will just be linking it. Um, but at this point, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to just take a couple of, of mission statements and um, of the um, examples in each one of these categories. And then we'll move on to the actual pool. This is going to be for the Scorpio new moon. This is the power wish. So it says that a Scorpio new moon will help you focus on one thing at a deeper level, demonstrate outstanding focus, deepen your bond with a loved one, attract a soulmate, 
Turn around a hopeless situation. Restore or resurrect what has been ruined. Turn a past mistake into a success. Achieve a stunning transformation. Purchase real estate and gain passive income. Okay. It also states that um, it's going to also help you with anything related to the uterus or ovary, sexual organs, urinary organs, and menstruation. Anything to do with anything related to the hormones, sexuality, and anti-aging. These are some of the examples of the inquiries of the universe and what you would want to write about. What mission would you like to dedicate your life to? What situation would you like to turn around? If you were reborn right now, what kind of person would you like to be? What is something that didn't go well in the past that you'd like to, uh, to give another try? And what, real, what kind of real estate would you like to own and where? Okay. Now we're going to get into um, the top three power wish examples. Uh-oh. I knew that was going to happen. There we go. And we go here. I intend to part... With my, le with my past self and begin a completely new journey right now or a completely new life. I intend to share the rest of my life with a soulmate. I intend to make this new moon as an opportunity to get out of my ruts and ride a wave of good fortune. All right. These are some of the words. So we have restoration. We also have value, truth, honest feelings, fresh start, come back, try again and instincts. We also have um, soulmates, so destiny, better half, past life, karma, ancestry. Um, for income, we have asset, inheritance, bank, insurance, stock, mysterious, sexy, sex appeal, alluring, or hidden. And then we have more keywords. Um, one and only would be unshakable, true, uncompromising. Belong together would be deepen in a relationship understand each other, remarry, see through, commit, share, inherit, take over and bequeath. Right. So some of the um, categories or, you know, subcategories that you can write about in the example of what your new moon power wish will look like is as follows. Um, as it pertains to romantic relationships and partnerships, you could write something like I intend to meet my soulmate and establish a bond that transcends time and space. I intend to meet a sexy partner and remarry within a year. As far as uh, finances or career and business is concerned, I intend to fully master my current job and become a charismatic leading figure in the field of couples counseling. Finances. I intend to find a second job and purchase a penthouse with a view of Central Park. Habits. Let's go here. I intend to donate 10% of all unexpected income and bonuses to charity. So you can kind of see that everything needs to start out with an I intend. Okay. I'm going to put this back right here so you don't focus on what the full moon says. Give you a couple more categories, then we're going to get into the pools. Personality. I intend to live with my eyes on the future without being dragged down by the past. Health and beauty. I intend to do mindfulness meditation every night before bed, developing the mental strength to fully restore my, myself overnight, even if I had a bad day. And last but not least, miscellaneousness or miscellaneous. I intend to use my feelings of regret and frustration as a springboard to give myself a fresh start as I tackle a new project. I love this, guys. We can definitely go over that together. It's a good read. I highly suggest that you guys go ahead and get that. Now we're about to go into the pools podcast. This will be pool based upon your rising and your sun. And I'm sorry if the lights keep flickering. All right. I have shuffled these already, but I'm going to go over and get it. We're going in with Andro Andromeda Skies Love Oracle. I was going to do another one, but then I changed my mind. Um, please go and watch all of your readings on the channel, as well as the three collective readings that are there. All right. I think I'm going to be adding maybe two more readings to the. Uh Oh, look at that. That's what someone wants. Want some of you guys to know. I'm going to be adding two more collective readings to the arsenal. Okay, and we are going to go ahead and start off here 
Let me just move this light, guys. It is such a pain in the butt. There we go. Hope you can still see everything. We start out with Aries and Aries rising. You have, I need time. Okay. This is what they want you to know in this new moon in Scorpio. Let's move on to Taurus and Taurus rising. I dive in and out of relationships. Uh-oh. We move on to Gemini and Gemini rising. I pulled away because I am overwhelmed with all of the things going on in my life. That, that resonates with someone. This is their truth. We move on to Cancer and Cancer rising. Thank you, spirit. You make me want to be a better person. Wow. Confirmation for some of you. Don't think about it too much. Just go where it takes you. We move on to Leo and Leo rising. Thank you, spirit. I am intimidated by you. Uh-oh. We move on to Virgo and Virgo rising. Thank you, spirit. I gave in to temptation. Uh-oh. We move on to Libra and Libra rising. I feel you. Sit with it. Sit with it. We move on to the star of the show, Scorpio and Scorpio rising. Thank you, spirit. Can we start over? Okay. We move on to Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. Thank you, spirit. Too many. Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. Please forgive me. Okay. I'm going to do a quick shuffle. We move on to Capricorn and Capricorn rising. Thank you, spirit. Please be patient with me. We move on to Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Long distance. Wow. And finally, we move on to Pisces and Pisces rising. Did something fall? I thought your car fell, Pisces. Hold on. Nope. Pisces and Pisces rising spirit. Finances are a problem. Uh-oh. Okay, guys. That concludes it. You know what? I think for shits and giggles, I'm going to do one more. Because I, I, I was drawn to this first, first deck. I'm going to do one more. Because I was drawn to it. But then I put it back. I'm just going to go ahead, uh-oh, and do two. I don't know why I'm killing myself. That's going to be a hell of a time stamp, but Aries and Aries rising. The chaser. Fear of abandonment. Chasing and codependencies. Taurus and Taurus rising. Key on a ring. Many options. Unconventional, one night stand or stringing alone. Gemini and Gemini rising. Hammer, sabotage and rebuild. Persistent, working on it and repairing. Cancer, cancer rising. Cancer, cancer rising. Oh, we got two. This one came out first. Twin flames. Yin yang. Balance. Look at that. Union. Duality. Complement and polar opposites. Some of you guys just sit with these cards. In paradise. Happiness and joy. Playfulness. Enjoying each other. And honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. and move on to Leo. Leo rising. Soulmates. Soul connection, partnership, soul contract, life partner. Virgo, Virgo rising. Girl with the snake, charm to use, enable and boundaries. Libra and Libra rising came right out. Poker face, taking a chance, risk and options, not showing hand and gambling. Okay. Star of the show, Scorpio and Scorpio rising. Sunglasses, watching, looking, perception, and stalking. 
I don't like it. Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. This is for Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. Uh-oh. Engagement ring. Higher commitment, eternity, partnership, union, and completion. All right. Capricorn. Capricorn rising. You got two. Healthy choices, Cap. Self-love, self-care, being happier, and love and life. Love call. Someone's going to express love, messages of love, thinking of you and informing you and letting you know. Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Guys, please watch for your sun, moon rising. <clears throat> okay. Something popped over. Let me see. No. Aquarius, sun and rising. I'm telling you to watch for all of them, although I'm calling out, I see. Cut down, cutting out, separation, stop the pattern, and silent treatment. And last but not least, Pisces and Pisces rising, passion, insane chemistry, sparks having fun, equal interest, and burning desire. Guys, that concludes the Moon Pools podcast. Thank you so much for lending me your ears and eyes. Again, everything, see this thing is falling. Everything you need is below in the description box for you and your collective. And I will see you in our next Moon Pools podcast. Everyone else, I'll see you next week when we do it again. Bye, guys.